My friends, this video is about how Resident Evil 3 Remake is a great way and also a terrible way to start off a game. Let's hop to it. Let's start with the positive and look at Resident Evil 3 Remake and why the intro is so great, and that is walking around Jill's apartment. While we don't spend that much time in her apartment, we get a great idea of what her character is going through and her mindset. There has been controversy in how Jill is portrayed in Resident Evil 3 Remake. Some enjoy the change, some thought she was too action hero heavy, some thought she was too pissy at everyone else. I made a Reddit thread to gauge people's opinions on it, and mostly it did tend towards positive, but there were still some negatives about that. I will link it in the description below. But what I love about this intro in Jill's apartment is it justifies her changes in character and the way that she acts. Well, we have the whole nightmare scene and she's mentioned that she's been going through nightmares. We have the pill bottles. We have everything in utter disarray. We have the Pepe Sylvia wall for Umbrella Corporation. Take a look at this! Jesus Christ, that right there is the mail. Now let's talk about the mail. Can we talk about the mail, please? There's this photo of the dog that's such a mystery to me and everyone. Look at all the empty beer bottles, the empty pill bottles, the pizza lying around. Open the fridge and see all that junk food. And also the fact that she's been holed up in her apartment now for quite some time. Girl's a little on edge. I love getting to go around the apartment here because it gives a lot of great insight into what her character is going through. It's only just been a few months since the incident of Resident Evil 1 and things are really taking a toll on her. So when she leaves, Later and starts interacting with the others, we could see why she's a little bit pissy with everything that's going on. Well, you can thank your corporate overlords for that. This contrasts a lot in comparison to Resident Evil 1 Remake, where she was more professional, calm, stoic. But after everything she went through in that incident and the months since, obviously she's on edge. And with getting to walk around her apartment and examine all these things, it does justify her mindset and her shift in character. Now, if the game started like the original Resident Evil 3 Nemesis, where she simply just jumps out the window and gets going, and she started acting like she does, then there would be worry for concern of where did this personality shift come from? It wasn't exactly justified. But here the game takes the time and the beginning here to justify her mindset. While well, getting to explore where the playable character lives is a really great way to get insight in their character, not many games make use of it. You do see it more in movies and television shows and books, but I think it's an underrated tool for how to convey the character's mindset. Another great example would be the Deus Ex Human Revolution and Deus Ex Mankind Divided games. One of the highlights in Deus Ex Human Revolution is getting to go to your playable character, Adam Jensen's apartment. The game doesn't start in the apartment so we get some time with Adam Jensen as kind of this gruff, maybe feels a little generic character. But when we get to his apartment, we get to really explore what he's been going through these last few months since the incident that changed him. To me, this is one of the best moments of Deus Ex Human Revolution. For many, it is the same thing. What starts off as a somewhat generic character who's maybe somewhat of a blank slate, we get a lot of great insight into who Adam Jensen is as a character. There's the old storytelling rule of show, don't tell, and making use of getting to explore your character's home or apartment is such a great way of fleshing out their character and getting into their mindset. There's this conversation Mel Gear saw too between Rose and Ryden and that always stuck out to me about Rose first going to Ryden's place. It wasn't your violent nature that scared me. It was your room, your heart. Stop it. There wasn't anything in your room. Only a bed and a small desk. It looked like a prison cell. <laughs> Rose? No television set, no family pictures, not even a poster. And that's really interesting insight into who Raiden is as a character, as kind of a blank slate. Sadly, we don't get to spend that much time in Jill's apartment, and we move on to the next bit of the game, which unfortunately is the negative here of how not to start a game. With that, we're given no build up to Nemesis whatsoever. He's just there. If you're like me, you're probably wondering what were the developers thinking about this portion. Building up tension and suspense to the reveal of Nemesis could have been so easy to do and so great, but instead they just go right to it. Now again, maybe it's something where they're trying to catch you off guard or subvert your expectations. Compare this to Resident Evil Nemesis, where we get some time with Brad briefly and he does mention something coming after us. Listen, he's coming for us. We're both gonna die. What are you saying? You'll see. Then we get a few minutes of gameplay. We get to take out some zombies. We get to explore a bit. Then we get to the police department. And then this happens with Brad. Now, 
Now, by no means perfect, this is a far better way of building up to who this character is as Nemesis. And I'm just perplexed why the developers just overly skip this. Again, I know they want to catch you off guard, and that is a great way, especially when it comes to horror games, but it just simply doesn't work. Imagine Silent Hill 2 if they just threw Pyramid Head right in your face right away. It's such a shame because the intro of getting to walk around Jill's apartment and get insight into her character and what's going on is really great, and then just gets ruined by this. That's all for today. I would love to hear your thoughts. Leave comments below how you feel about the introduction or Jill's personality change, if you thought it was justified. Like and subscribe, you know the whole deal. Follow me on Twitter. This has been Boulder Punch. I gotta go back to punching my boulders. Take care, everyone.